Ahoy there, mateys! The Game Boy Geek here. Hey, this Saturday is Halloween. And with it being on the weekend, there's going to be a lot more Halloween and costume parties going on than normal. So today I'm going to do my top five games to play at a Halloween party. Now this is not going to be the top five epic three-hour horror games. No, that's a completely different list that you'll probably never see me do. So these are going to be ones that are games that are... Uh, easy enough that if you don't play a lot of games out there, maybe you've only played Uno and Monopoly, you could take this to a party, most of these games, and play them pretty easily and still have a lot of fun with them. Now if you're on the other side of the fence and you're a you know, board game enthusiast, hobbyist, and you have hundreds of games, you'll still like these ones too. So let's take a look. Top 5 games to bring to a Halloween party this Saturday. All right, now this is actually a Halloween themed game. Uh, it's a very simple card game called Tricks and Treats, the card game. Uh, it's two to four players, plays in 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, this game is really cool. Have you ever heard of the game Spectre Ops? This is a very popular game that came out this year, Hidden Movement, and it really blew up on the, on the scene. This is uh, the designer who did Spectre Ops, uh, Emerson, also designed this. This was his first published design. I remember getting this and going, Wow, this is really simple, but it's really fun. It's got some depth there. we got to watch out for this guy, and sure enough, look what he's doing now. Now, this is a good game that's simple and easy. You're basically trying to put candies in your secret uh, jar, uh, basically your little pumpkin that you, you hold all your candy in, and nobody, you're trying to keep which one is yours is secret, but you want to have the most at the end of the game. So you want to put a bunch of candy in your bag, but you don't want everyone to know that that's your bag. So you're, you're doing misdirection. You're putting candies on the people's bag. Now, the base game is really not a game. You really have to play this with the advanced rules, which essentially just adds two bags to the, to the set that does crazy things. They break the rules of the game, and every game is different because you take two of these and you randomly put them in the game, and some things, it just changes things, and it really makes it really cool because, you know, there's all different ones, the gamblers, the casinos, and it, it just changes what happens. Um, it, it makes it a lot of fun. So anyway, a quick, easy card game, Halloween-themed Tricks and Treats from Nazca Games. Number four. Four, four, four. Now I'm originally from Boston, and inside, just outside of Boston is Salem, Massachusetts, where all the witch trials were held way back in the day. Well, there on Halloween, they have among one of the largest Halloween outside gatherings and parades you can imagine. I've been to a bunch of times growing up. And so I want to put something in there about Salem, but something that's a cool game. This is a new game called New Salem. And in this game, it's three to eight players. It plays pretty quickly in about 35 to 40 minutes. In this game, some people are witches and some people are Puritans. And you're building this new village outside of Salem, but some of the witches have come too. And you're, and you're trying to figure out if you're a Puritan, who are the witches? And, and you're drafting cards and you're trying to play points, but sometimes playing points is making you act like a witch. And so there's a lot of finger pointing. You're trying to figure out who the witches are and put them on trial. It's a quick social deduction game with a card drafting element. Now, out of all the games that I have in this list, this one's probably the one that will take the most explaining, although it's not too difficult. If you're a new gamer, um, I would try to play this once before Halloween so that you get the mechanics down and you can explain it well, because it's probably the most difficult one. But in, you know, in all, all things being said, it's not that difficult of a game. It's pretty quick, it's pretty easy. But in this list, it's probably among the most difficult. But it is a lot of fun. You'll be pointing and yelling. Some people will be witches. Good with the theme. A lot of fun. That's New Salem. Number three. Now the next one is actually an expansion for a game. So if you don't have the base game, you'll need to buy both. And it's the expansion for King of Tokyo. This is the base game, and inside this I have a box, actually I probably threw the box out. <laughs> is, uh, you'll see the, the box right here. Uh, this is the Halloween expansion for King of Tokyo. Wow, rightfully so. Should be on there, right? King of Tokyo itself is one of the best games to play with new gamers. Uh, it's so much fun. You're rolling dice. It's like it's like you're on King of the Hill, where one person's in Tokyo and everyone's rolling dice trying to knock them off, and you're either trying to get 20 points or be the last person standing. It's sort of like King of the Hill, the monster game. It's a lot of fun. Tons of fun. You add the, the, the Halloween expansion, everybody gets a costume to wear at the beginning of the game. That's a variant rule in the rules, but that's what you always play. You get a costume, and it really makes you want to hit people more, because if you hit somebody hard enough, you get to rip their costume off and put it on yourself. And these costumes do all sorts of crazy things. It makes the game a lot more fun, a lot more attack heavy, 
uh, and a lot more confrontation. And it makes it, in my opinion, a lot a, a lot better of a game with the Halloween expansion. And hey, Halloween's a Saturday, this is a no-brainer. King of Tokyo with the Halloween expansion. This is one of the best entry-level games to bring to a party at any rate. Put on the Halloween expansion, it's perfect for this Saturday. Number two. All right, this one is somewhat a little bit spooky. Think of a, a full moon, think of wolves howling at the moon. We're looking at One Night Ultimate Werewolf. This is a small game that you can just, you know, bring right in. You can put it in a little bag, you put it in your wife's purse, you take it in there, and it plays up to 10 players. And this is a crazy game where there's gonna be some werewolves and there's gonna be some people on the villagers team. Certain things are gonna happen when people's eyes are closed, people's roles are gonna get switched. And when you wake up, you're trying to figure out through asking people who they were and what they did, who are the true werewolves? Some people are gonna be lying, you're trying to catch them in those lies. It's a lot of fun. It's easy to teach. Uh, you can play with just a, the, the main roles, just a plain old villager and a werewolf and maybe one other. And uh, it, it gets pretty interesting and it plays up to a large group and it's timed. It, it never takes more than 10 minutes to play this game, right? It's a timed game. As you get better, it actually takes even less. And this is one of those games where some people play and then they'll drop out and new people will come in. Very, very good for parties, especially Halloween parties, such as this spooky with werewolves. And that's One Night Ultimate Werewolf. One of the best short hidden role party, point your finger at your neighbor and tell him he's lying type of game, One Night Ultimate Werewolf. Number one. Now this one has just came out in North America. It came out last year in Europe and it was a huge hit and it finally came out here in North America. We're looking at Mysterium here. This is a cooperative game for up to seven players where there was a murder in this old mansion here and you're trying to cooperatively figure it out where one player, even though he's on your team, is the ghost, they can't speak. They're handing out these cards with this amazing artwork on them and they're trying to tell everybody else who possibly did the murder that happened in this? And you're supposed to associate this weird original artwork with the possible suspects, locations, and weapons out there. And you're all working together. You're all seeing different things. You're working together. It is one of the best games that have come out in a long time. I really love this game. Now, why is this on for Halloween? Well, in this specific edition, uh, when you're doing this, the ghost is giving you directions. In the, in the rule book, in the backstory, it says that this seance is actually happening on Halloween. So this is the perfect game. Why it's my number one is because the backstory is perfect, the game is awesome, and it's really easy. I mean, you're just giving cards out and people are saying which one does it go with. Uh, but it really has a lot of depth there too, it has a lot of interaction, plays a high player count, perfect for a Halloween party. And this is Mysterium, one of the best games that have come out lately. Perfect for Halloween. That's my number one. 